This rally is not controlled by any business agent or any union leader. It's controlled by us, the Peter McGuire Group, Peter J. McGuire Group, Lincoln Fall Carpenters, workers in the Carpenters Union. It was rallies just like this, some small, some large, that led up to this strike. And it's rallies like this, some small, some large, that led up to the rally with a thousand carpenters down there in Kent. We did that. We did that. We did that. And it was rallies just like this that led to four successive tentative agreements getting shut down. Yeah! yeah. When this strike was being voted on, Evelyn Shapiro, the EST, the Carpenters Union, went down to the convention center to hold her press conference to argue for carpenters to make a cheaper wage and say that the contract was fantastic and that we were making 20% raise and that basically we were being greedy. But nothing could be further from the truth. And she went on with her communications director, who's not a carpenter, to put this message in the media that basically the carpenters were foolish to vote down this contract, which was not much different from the previous three that carpenters had voted down. Last month and the month before, I made sure to ask business agents and representatives of the council, what are you doing if we decide to vote down this contract? What are, you, are you preparing for a strike? Will you be prepared for a strike? And every time I've asked this, whether it was to the bargaining committee or the contract administration or to the business reps, we're not preparing for a strike. And when Evelyn Shapiro went to locals all over Western Washington in her campaign to get us to vote yes on a contract we did not want, members asked her, when will you let us strike? What is the number of carpenters that it will take to take us to strike? If you won't let us strike after 76 percent 77 or after 77 percent after 60 percent when will you do it and so on saturday the members rejected that offer and on saturday that off that that rejection translated into a vote for a strike which the union leadership had not made one picket sign for. All summer long, all year long, they had not made one picket sign for. There was zero preparation. And so the representatives for the Northwest Carpenters Union scrambled on Sunday to go to work to organize this strike. Only four job sites were initially selected to be picketed at. Only four job sites. There's 400 in Seattle, according to the business agents. Just in Seattle, not including Bellevue and the surrounding areas. This strike affects everything in Western Washington. And so, there was zero preparation. And Ellen wrote to the International for Dispensation for help, essentially. So she wrote to the general president, who's the head of the International and the Carpenters Union, the most powerful person in our union. And in her letter, 
she essentially said, the carpenters here, we're going to get a fantastic contract. They were going to get a 20% raise. They were going to get all the bells and whistles with all kinds of benefits. And they were going to get non-discrimination language. And it wasn't enough for them. They're being greedy. Can you please help us out? And so the response was, no, rejected, boom. And so even during the strike, this message, this message is still coming out. She's working against us. And now we got a letter coming from these guys at the AGC, and it's the same thing. The carpenters who get a 20% raise with all the bells and whistles and all kinds of benefit language. And, and you guys are, are getting this and that, and we're going to give you paid parking in Bellevue. So why don't you accept our deal? You're the ones that sent us the deal. And we're more than happy to approve of it. You're being greedy. They aren't. It almost seems like Evelyn herself penned that letter. She might as well have. Absolutely. The deal, the, the letter from the AGC mirrored the letters from Evelyn Shapiro and the rhetoric from Evelyn Shapiro for all summer long. And these are supposedly the people that are on opposite sides of the bargaining table. But really what it really seems like is that they're on one side of the bargaining table and the people out here are on the other side. That's right. And so now, with this strike going on, on Sunday, given that the Peter McGuire group, a caucus with 22, 2,300 members in Facebook, now that they've rejected all these contracts and they've so stood strong, Evelyn wrote us a letter and she asked for someone to go to the bargaining table. She made it public, she blasted it all over social media and she put it on every Facebook page she could. She used her reps to do it. That was at 9 p 9.30 p.m. on Sunday. And so me and the three other men, there were no women that were invited, we talked. It was me, Don Sorensen, Jimmy Mata Jr., and Raymond Shepard. Because it was our names that were at the top of that letterhead. And we were the ones being called out. And it said, as, rep as representatives of the contract opposition, Will you please send someone to the bargaining table to represent the contract opposition? We are willing to listen to you. It's the first time in my career I've ever seen something like this. And so we talked for a bit and we decided that we would send Raymond Shepard. Two days after that, I received a letter from the lawyers for the Pacific Northwest Regional Council of Carpenters saying, uh, which was a cease and desist letter that told me to cease and desist from all activities that might interfere with their strike. The letter was emailed to me and it was also sent via FedEx Express overnight in snail mail. And so there's no question that I was going to receive this letter. It was also blasted all over social media with my home address, my phone number, my email address. It was put on every single council website, which every news agency in the country is currently looking at by the reps. The letter was put out on social media not to inform me. It was put out on social media to intimidate me and to intimidate anyone associated 
with the Peter McGuire group, which Evelyn recognizes is the contract opposition. I will not be intimidated. Right. Nobody in our union who works with their bags on and risks their lives every day to put food on the table for their families to build this country, to make all these freaking billionaires rich, who built Amazon HQ1, who are currently rebuilding the UW, none of them are going to be intimidated. Right. I've worked with these men and women my whole construction career. And I've worked in all different kinds of industries. And construction workers are not the kind of people you want to mess around with and make angry. Right. We're not the kind of people that you can intimidate easily. We're a hardened bunch. And so I'm not worried about some letters that sit, so some lawyers that sit in a pretty office with a fancy desk who had their whole lives handed to them. They don't scare me. I've got my own legal representation and I've got the backs I, I, and the brothers and sisters in our group, in our organization, have got my back and I've got all their backs. Because solidarity Solidarity is not just a pretty word. It's a word to live by. It's a weapon and it's a shield. And that's what's going to take us through this strike and take us to victory. It's not going to be the fear, the lies, or the manipulation, or the intimidation. It's not going to be through cowardice. It's going to be through solidarity. It's going to be through friendship. It's going to be through the relationships that we have with our coworkers. Brotherhood. Our brotherhood and our sisterhood and our... <laughs> so, the, the union leadership, the union leadership currently has a stranglehold over this strike. And that's what that letter is all about, is because they're trying to tighten their grip over the strike. That's why there are only four projects selected for Thursday, to tighten their grip over the strike. That's why there had to be a near riot on Wednesday, a fight, between carpenters and the officers to get the Microsoft job picketed. Now they want to end that picket on Monday. Of course they want to end that picket on Monday because it's the largest, most expensive job on the West Coast and probably in the country. And we, we can't, can't let them do it. No. We cannot let them do it. Carpenters are not going to be able to break this stranglehold on their own. There's no way. We will be able to break it with the solidarity of all workers, all trades. We will be able to break it with the solidarity of women and ethnic minorities and sexual people with different sexual orientations. Right. We're going to be able to break it with other people in our communities and our friends and families and neighbors. That's the only way we're going to win. That's the only way we're going to break the stranglehold of the rich and the powerful, the richest and most powerful people in this city. Because all those contractors work for developers. They're just middlemen. Those capitalists were for bigger capitalists. They were for Amazon, Google, Facebook.
And you know what they're terrified of? They're terrified of the Peter Maguire group because they've never seen a rank and file group that is willing to unite all workers. That's willing to spell out what the difference is between a carpenter and a developer. So we'll take solidarity to win, everyone. And we will need the community to win. We will need everyone to help. We will need our churches, our friends, our families, our community organizations, the schools of our children. We'll need everyone. There's no way to do it alone. Carpenters have their hands tied. Talk to carpenters and you'll find out. They'll tell you. <clears throat> Ask them what they need right now. They need to shut down all the job sites that are strikeable, and they cannot. They can't do it. They're legally bound. But the community can help them to win. Other workers can help them to win. Women can help them to win. And this, works, this brings me to my next point. The media attacks. The media attacks have only just begun. We're on day two. And the media attacks are savage. They've only just begun. The real cannons of the media have not even come out yet. The heavy artillery of the media has not come out yet. When we began, we had zero media coverage. We were ignored. Now, we're becoming the talk of the country. Why is that? Why is it that we were ignored? Why is it that now we're becoming the talk of the country? because of money. This whole country is based around money. The whole world's based around money. Carpenters are not up there on the totem pole despite what Evelyn Shapiro and the AGC and the contractors and the media would like for the public to believe. We're not. Because if we were, the media would be on our side 110%. The only media that's on our side, it's no coincidence, are ragtag media organizations. Ragtag media organizations that do not represent everything that the rich and powerful has to say. Many of them run by normal people. The media is taking the line of the contractors and they're taking the line of the union bureaucrats. They're taking the line of the rich and powerful. Because they own it. And last month, going back a little bit, in August, the carpenters had a delegate meeting. The general thing that came out of this delegate meeting was a smear campaign against the Peter Maguire group, against the contract opposition. It is that the contract opposition are basically barbaric men who hate women, who hate minorities, that you can't trust. 
Don't listen to them and their lies, their disinformation, their fake news. And that was the message that came out. The entire construction industry deals with these issues. The in industries all across this country and in the world deal with these is issues. It's no secret. Sexism is a problem in society. Racism is a problem in society. We have identified these issues in our group, in our caucus. Both the men and the women have identified these issues. And as these issues have come up, we've attempted to democratically talk about them and address them as adults. to educate the brothers that have sexist and backwards ideas and to tune them up and straighten them out. That's how we're gonna move forward. The council has had ample time and opportunity to deal with these issues and they've failed. That's why we're still struggling with them. We can do our part to take corrective action. And we have tried to do our part to take corrective action. What corrective action has the council done? What corrective action have the contractors done that let this shit be getting away with every day? There's a reason why women are only 1 to 3% of the construction industry, and it's not because of our group. It's not because of our group. And it's not because women don't want to make higher wages like they can in the construction industry. And it's not because they don't want to join a union. And it's not because women are scared of hard work. There's a reason. Think about that. It's divide and conquer. The media is coming after me because I admit, and it's, I've tried not to make it a secret, I'm a Marxist. And that, merely, that means that means that I believe that workers, people with their bags on, should control society. That's right. That's really right. That's correct. That's democracy. The people with their bags on, with their tools in their hands, the people who get their hands dirty, whether they're men or women, or whatever race you are, whatever right. creed you are, whatever religion, religion you are, those people should be the ones that the ones that are running the show. Yes. That's what Marxism is. Yep. That's right. Because those are the people that are the hope for humanity. Not these fuckers here. That's right. That That's run the right, city and the ground. That's yeah. right, Lord. Right. Tell them. Tell them. It wasn't working, people that did it. And I've never told anybody to become a Marxist because I believe in leading by example. I learned a long time ago, you lead by example. And if you can do that, if you can lead by example, and if you have a good example by deed and not by cheap talk, people will see that People will listen to you. People will ask you questions. People will want to join you. I've never told anyone how to think as far as, far as that goes. And my answer to Art, what do you have to say about how you're a Marxist? What's wrong with that? What's nothing, wrong with that? Absolutely nothing. 
These tactics are just the beginning. There's going to be other strategies that the media is going to pull out. <clears throat> and the purpose is to drive a wedge between the Peter McGuire group and the carpenters who work in the field and the rest of the trades and the rest of the working class. And they're experienced at it, they go to school for it, and they got the money for it. And it's going to be up to us to educate people about that wedge and to take that wedge and to take it out from there so it's no longer driving us away from other workers, from our communities. And it's up to us to take that wedge and to drive it the other way in between these suckers and us. That's right, Art. Right, uh... Carpenters are going to have to step up for more than themselves. They're going to have to step up for everyone, for all workers, for all trades. This is not easy when you're not on the top of the food chain. But right now, we're leading the struggle. People all over the country are looking to us. The other trades are looking to us. It's the carpenters that lead the job sites. It's the carpenters that interact with every single trade on the job sites. Every single one from start to finish. We have to take leadership, and we're going to have to stand up for not just us, but for everyone. And it's a hard burden to bear, but that is the burden for victory. The council strategy with the handful of job sites they picked out, with the attacks through the media, with all the, whether it's calling us misogynists and sexists, to uh, making us march all day long for nothing, for empty buildings, for yards and, and holes in the ground. The council strategy is to wear us out. They want to tire us out. And they want to bleed us out through our wallets. That's why they're starting to come after members with lawsuits. <laughs> lawsuits that they said in the very beginning that they did not want to get involved in because they're costly. Well, they were costly when it meant a successful strike, but they're not costly when they mean persecuting members who are standing up for other members. We cannot let ourselves get tired out. We cannot let ourselves get bled out. The council has admitted through the Seattle Times, I believe, that only 2,000 members are on strike out of 11,000. This is because they have admitted the majority of the construction sites are non-union. And that the workers are basically having their hands tied 
so they're forced to go to work during a strike. So, 